Hello, and welcome to this five minutes overview of well-architected for startups. My name is Tim, and I'm a startup solutions architect at AWS. Together with you today, I will dive into the security pillar for startups. Why should it be important to you, and what are the main principles behind that? Let's get started. Security is one of the five pillars of the well-architected framework. If you're not aware of the well-architected framework in review, please watch the overview video of this series. For AWS, security is job zero, and that is how we encourage our customers to think as well. The security pillar is all about taking advantage of cloud technologies to protect your data, systems, and assets. With AWS, you have the broadest selection of security services and features to bolster your security posture. It is very important to be thinking about security from the beginning as a startup, as a security incident can lead to financial or brand damage, lost customer trust, and slowed growth. To work against that, today we'll be talking about the main design principles for security. We learn from our customers and experience these seven principles that form the security pillar. Together, they form the basis for a stronger security posture of your workloads running on AWS by giving you a better understanding on what is happening in your environments, controlling access and permissions, automating responses, and baking in security best practices from the start. Today, we will look into three of the design principles. I invite you to check out the other design principles in the linked security pillar white paper. First, let's discuss implementing a strong identity foundation. For strong identity foundations, two key concepts apply. Centralized identity management and eliminating the reliance on long-term static credentials and applying the principles of least privileges. Instead of utilizing long-term user credentials for accessing AWS resources, use a centralized identity management such as AWS Single Sign-On to federate access to AWS accounts with temporary credentials. You can also federate to an existing identity service without needing to recreate all your existing users as IAM users if your identity provider supports the SAML 2.0 standard. This way, you are not giving out long-term credentials that might be compromised at some point. The best way not to lose an access key is to never have one in the first place. Additionally, this approach allows you to easily scope down and limit access for users in different environments and applications, abiding by the principle of least privileges. This means only giving the amount of permissions needed to fulfill a task. The IAM Access Analyzer now makes it easier for you to implement least privileges permissions by generating IAM policies based on your activity. Next up, applying security at all layers. Make sure you make full use of security at multiple layers of your infrastructure. Where possible, use CloudFront, where hundreds of worldwide points of presence in the AWS Edge network provide scalability, protect from denial of service attacks, and protect from web application attacks, which can also include an AWS web application firewall integration. Within your VPC, Re reduce your attack surface via an application load balancer through to your application layer, use network access control lists and security groups as firewalls and create network zones to lock down access from the internet. The important thing here is with each layer you add, you are reducing potential attack surfaces, improving the security posture of your AWS environment. Last stop, a quick win for your startup easily protect the data in transit and at rest. AWS provides the tools for encryption in transit and at rest, often by default or just with a few clicks. S3, RDS, and DynamoDB are just a few examples of data stores that natively support encryption of your data at rest. Make it a rule to encrypt everything. This can be as easy as switching on server-side encryption with S3 or using Amazon DynamoDB where encryption at rest is the default. Decryption then is done transparently for you and you can switch the keys at any time. Encrypting your data in transit means wrapping another layer of protection when your data is moving. There's no additional charge 
for provisioning public or private SSL TSS certificates you use with Amazon Certificate Manager integrated services such as Elastic Load Balancing, CloudFront or API Gateway. Thank you for watching this episode on security and keep watching this series as we keep diving into each well-architected pillar. Thank you.